we have very little idea of what's going on under the ice, and we're seeing that ice disappear. We run the risk of never having understood how important under ice processes are before we don't have ice to study anymore. We've wondered about that for years, but we've never been able to access the underside of the ice. This work's never been done because it's difficult, it's dangerous. It's a very limited and unique number of people that would come together to, to do a project like that. We're going to be losing heat the second we hit water. We're going to be cold. The algae will be likely on the ceiling of the ice trapped in here. And then it'll be the first sample ever extracted under ice for getting an algae sample for citizen science. Never been done before. It's a lot of people who are very, very good at what they do. We have more lakes than anyone in the world, but we're also the, you know, the great frozen north. We are the land of winter. We have more of the world's lakes and more of the world's winter than anyone else. It should be Canadians that, that seek to understand how lakes work in winter. You know, people talk about the Amazon rainforest as, as being the lungs of the world, but when you look at the algae in lakes and rivers and oceans, algae accounts for about half of the oxygen that we breathe. We don't know what's going on down there. We don't know what organisms are there and what they're doing. The ice underneath isn't frozen. It's a lot of firsts. It is. This is a lot of firsts. This is like the Great Lakes equivalent of a mission to Mars. We'll be doing something no one's ever tried. 